The Nile River is one of the longest rivers, if not the longest river in the world. And it has sparked the curiosity of many different people because of it's just sheer size and you know mystery but then also but also because it was home to many civilizations such as the ancient egyptian empire this video i'm going to be telling you guys about a lost country called sinium and its discovery and the roman expedition to go and find the source of the nile which led people to the possible location of this country so let's get into it now to be specific, the name of this place was called Xianyu, and it was mentioned sometime during the first century AD. Specifically, it was a place that the people of the Aksumite kingdom were trade with for ivory, located somewhere in around central southern Sudan. And the mention of it goes as follows. Opposite Mountain Island, on the mainland 20 stadia from shore, lies Adulis, a fair-sized village from which there is a three days journey to Kolo, an inland town and the first market for ivory. From that place to the city of the people called Oxumites, there is a five days journey more. To that place, all the ivory is brought from the country beyond the Nile through the district called Cyaneum, and thence to Adulis. Practically the whole number of elephants and rhinoceros that are killed live in the places inland Although at rare intervals they are hunted on the sea coast even near Adulis, before the harbor of that market town, out at sea on the right hand, there lie a great many little sandy islands called Alalai, yielding tortoise shell, which is brought to market there by the fish eaters. It is mentioned in the Periplus of the Ethrian Sea, which was a map written in Greek during the first century AD, showing all the different trade routes of the Indian Ocean and etc and all the landing ports and etc. It was basically a, the, the trading world of the Indian Ocean at the time, or Eastern Hemisphere. It also includes a multitude of locations on the Horn of Africa, including one of the locations in interest, specifically Adulus and the kingdom or the city of Aksum. However, the owner or original writer of this map, the original person who made this map, is an unknown person. However, what is known is that this map, this map does seem to be a first-hand description. So it must have been someone who was very familiar with the areas of these uh, places that he, you know, mapped out. And possibly a sailor. These expeditions to discover the source of the Nile did bring the southern tribes of the southern Sudan into contact with representatives of Mediterranean civilization. Interestingly as well, some southern regions of the Sudan or the central regions of Sudan that are located just south of the kingdom of Kush and Meroe showed evidence for trade and diplomatic ties in one of the expedition with the Meroe kingdom, which might give insight to where the location of Senyu may have been and who exactly may have been there. And also another thing to note is that the objectives for exploration of the Nile River and its sources may have occurred for different reasons, right? Some of these would have been to figure out figure out why the Nile floods happened, but then also, you know, to find the source of the Nile, which I've mentioned previously in this video. Greek philosophers had already made theories about why the Nile would flood since the 4th and 5th centuries BC. However, none of them would be confirmed until a writing from Aristotle would confirm that a expedition made by man down the Nile would confirm some of these theories. Other than that, identifying the exact places which they may have traveled to may be a little bit difficult, but the main theories are that they either made it into southern Sudan or at the very least to the highlands of Ethiopia. The trip or expedition to the Sud or marshy lands in southern Sudan is probably the more favored one. As for the location of Senyum again, it may have been somewhere around the Jazeera area. Archaeological sites such as Jebel Moy actually showed evidence and trade with the kingdom of Meroe and is likely where, you know, diplomatic ties were held with the uh, elites of Meroe and pastoral elites in the Jazeera who were agro-pastoralists would um, actually guide some of these representatives of Mediterranean civilization or explorers, you know, of the Roman Empire down to down south to the more southern reaches of the Nile River. And also other sites, other places such as modern day Sanadar have also been suggested to be, have been a trading station for the district of Sinium, providing the kingdom of Aksum with a lot of ivory, which the people of Jebumoy also have done for the Meroites. This might mean that the Jazeera might be the favorite place of the location of Sinium, 
When we look at the site, such as Jebel Moya, we actually find lots of evidence for trade, such as uh, Meroitic and the Patin period, artifacts from the people there, and also a culture of agro-pastoralism. As for the people who the populations of the Jazeera may have been ancestral to or connected to in some way, obviously some of the indigenous people who live there now who identify as Arabs but you know obviously with African history we know that a lot of people who identified as Arabs sometimes they're just more like assimilated people or people who have been assimilated into the Arabian culture not to deny any Arabness but you know definitely they would have some connections to their native local land also people who would have been connected would have been some of the Nilotic people as well. The Jebel Moya actually showed evidence for Western Nilotic type of culture when it comes to things like pastoralism, teeth evolution, and then just general linguistics. Um, multiple scholars have suggested a Nilotic presence around the same area. <clears throat> so these things should be kept in mind. More interestingly, later, just a few centuries later, during the sixth century, this same area would house the kingdom of Alodia, which was the Christian Nubia's southernmost kingdom. So it also may be possible that these people could have been um, some of the originators of the civilization in the area, people living in the, uh, the Jazeera region. However, with the site of Jebel Moya, it is actually mentioned, or it's actually known that occupation in that area seems to decline around the time of the formation of or the beginning of the Christian kingdom of Elodia. This region would just eventually house other kingdoms such as the Funj Empire, the Fazogli Empire if I'm pronouncing that right. It just shows you how um, things like civilization, culture and things have developed in that area. And I hope that you found this video valuable or entertaining at the very least. You know, it's a new type of, it's a new country, new place that I'm kind of talking about or a new kind of topic yeah with that being said hope you enjoyed it if you like this video definitely hit the like button and subscribe and also join the email newsletter where i can send you my blog articles and a lot of other things such as free guides courses things that might help you out with your research on the african continent african history you can also join my discord server where you can just talk with me chill with me and some of the homies that I always talk with in the VC, the voice chat discussions. I'm actually in one right now, but like I muted myself so I could record this video. And other than that, I just hope that the video didn't come across as like choppy because I was kind of in a rush. I'm very hungry right now. But yeah. Flex. See my tricep. <laughs> See my tricep, bro. I've been hitting the gym hard lately. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the video, subscribe to the video, support the channel, support the young, support the young. What's up, guys? Welcome to another video to the channel.